Over the next few weeks, this channel will be releasing videos to explain to you guys why science is important and how it differentiates from pseudoscience. In the course of these videos, we're going to present examples, demonstrations, and explanations of pseudoscience and how it affects all of us. So what exactly is pseudoscience? Basically, pseudoscience is spurious science. It seems inviting because it appeals to humans on a fundamental level, but it lacks empirical evidence and procedures as seen in actual science. You may have witnessed pseudoscience and actions through things like Ouija boards, conspiracy theories, ghosts, new age religious movements, otherwise known as cults, out-of-body experiences, and the anti-vaccine movement. And that's just to name a few. Usually, these things start out really small, but when enough people come to believe it and enough money's involved, it can become ingrained into our culture. For example, speaking to the dead can be traced back to a couple of sisters and their toe knuckles. These sisters are known as the Fox sisters. Story goes, they discovered a ghost in their house and figured out how to communicate with it through knocks on doors. Word got around that these sisters could talk to the dead and they became a huge hit, traveling the country and connecting families with their loved ones. People trusted these sisters so much that they would reveal deeply personal, sometimes traumatic secrets. After some years, the sisters were giving a presentation and one of the sisters, Kate, broke down and told everybody it was a sham. The secret was them being able to crack their toe knuckles loudly enough to imitate a knocking sound. It all started out as a way to fight off boredom and scare their mom. Five years later, when the money's run out and they're broke, Kate retracts her statement, saying she was pressured into a false confession by a scientist. Because of the Fox sisters, methods of talking to the dead have evolved and lasted to this day in the form of Ouija boards and seances, where people who claim extrasensory perceptions speak directly to the dead. On the other hand, Sometimes pseudoscientific claims have a scientific basis, but the information is extrapolated way outside of its scientific confines. I'm sure we've all heard of the Mohs artifact, 10 easy payments of 1999 and they'll send you classical music CDs proven to make your baby smarter. Okay. The original experiment studied 36 college students to see if Mozart music actually had an effect on intelligence. They listened to 10 minutes of Mozart and immediately after, students perform slightly better on a spatial reasoning test. This tiny improvement seen in college-aged kids has been modeled into a money-making machine, preying on parents who want the best for their kids, even when there have been no significant studies pointing to Mozart having any effect on infant development. We see it everywhere, in the news, through products, commercials, even through the mouths of our very own politicians, knowingly or not, using pseudoscience to influence the general public. There are so many people with a hunger for knowledge and science, but are instead fed information that is fantastical in nature. Guys, misinformation is dangerous. It influences public policies in ways that affect our society. When we ignore these things, it becomes a vicious cycle of the media feeding pseudoscience in our minds, just gobbling it up without question. Wouldn't you rather know and try to affect change than accept fallacious information? Let's change the world. Mm -hmm.